Hey guys, Sullivan here. Um, it's been a little while since we did a garden renovation update, so I've got my coffee. It's um, early in the morning and it looks like it's gonna be kind of cloudy, overcast day. So I thought we could do a lap and check out what I've been doing for the last couple months. It has been um, a video that I've sort of procrastinated making for, for many reasons. For one, for wanting to have everything be perfect, which I don't think that's ever going to happen. Um, and I'm trying to adopt the new mantra of like progress, not perfection, because um, I have made a lot of progress. But, you know, this year has just been relentless with the challenges. And it's been hard to keep up the optimism that I was trying so hard to cultivate along with all my seedlings. Um, all right, guys, so let's take a lap, grab your coffee. We'll look at everything that's been going on and um, try to find the progress and I don't know that we're gonna find a whole lot of perfection here. Um, and the one thing you might have noticed is that we're standing in front of the meadow and my front walkway, and that is because this is my new front gate. So I kind of feel like my garden starts here. So I thought that's where we would start. All right, so here we are at the front walkway. My planters, are very foliage heavy. All my petunias, um, we had a ton of rain for maybe two weeks, the last two weeks, and everything looks a little stressed out by too much water, but the coleus and sweet potato vine and everything is really taken off. And um, I actually might take one of these sweet potato, there's two, definitely didn't need two. Um, but yeah, I have to do a little cleaning and then my purple fountain grass that I bought as like a little tiny $2 starter guys is taken off. So um, I'm definitely dealing with like tons and tons of pest pressure. So, you know, I'll show you exactly how it is. We got all kinds of critters eating just about everything. Uh, it would have been nice, I guess, to start with the, you know, if we're going to do the good, the bad, and the ugly, maybe not to start with so many ugly things, but I guess as an overview, this doesn't look too bad. There is the begonia urn. There is one of my apple blossom clematis. My smoke tree did not enjoy the rainstorms, but it seems to have survived its third transplant in three years. Um, oh, look, some flowers. This is um, a smoky purple dusky violet verbascum. And then this is uh, honey Dijon. And you can see um, it looks like this bed is not on irrigation yet. It looks pretty tattered. Everything's, we're just trying to limp along. Um, couple colors of heuchera, some alyssum that I started from seed. You know, I would say that um, Moline verbascum is like one of my favorite pollinator friendly plants. And um, it, it does pretty well. Like these, these were all transplanted similar times and they were struggling in their starter pots and, and they're recovering nicely so everything in here is kind of going through it's like transplant shock recovery stage and then I did scatter some zinnia seeds and and some poppy seeds but I don't think they're gonna do anything and then this sadness is a young peony that um, I actually dug it up and inspected it and it had pretty weak feeder roots so it has struggled for water so this plant, um, it just was planted in October in its temporary spot. I probably pushed it by moving it. 
it has really nice healthy storage roots but it was really it it was already weak in the spring uh, it needed a lot of extra water so that means that it doesn't have a strong feeder root system and so that's why it looks like that um, it just kind of baked but the root system in the ground looks good and um, I'm just gonna cut the foliage off and it will be fine I'm not sure that anything up here is gonna look super super stunning this year so hopefully the zinnias will fill things in and I kind of needed to see how this drained before I put irrigation in and mulched it so I think mulching will definitely help. The compost is kind of like baking a little bit. All right, so moving on down the shady fence line, um, our neighbor's fence was here and it was, um, you know, it was a wooden fence. It, it needed to be replaced. It had some um, boards that were damaged and they have kind of a lovely wild dog. So we decided to split this tongue and groove section so that um, it's nicely finished on both sides, which is what makes it um, a more expensive fence option, but it was nice to be able to split it with them. So they have this same design with, you know, none of the mechanics of the fence on either side. And um, it looks really beautiful. <laughs> this is um, <laughs> maybe one of the um, these, this is bronze fennel that I grew from seed last year. So it's, um, I don't know, six feet tall now. And it does look really cool, I think, against the fence or the paint color. Um, this one's probably a little far forward, but, um, it's definitely, I, I think, a really pretty plant that butterflies really love. So I planted a bunch more. Um, everything, I guess, on this path is going to be pretty overgrown and weedy. Most of my attention has been spent in the backyard. And, um, it's just how it is. You know, you can only do so much. So we have not touched, with the exception of pulling a few plants that were going to get damaged by the fence, I haven't really touched much. I was so happy to see this oak leaf get flowers on it. Last year it didn't bloom. So I have a beautiful spot for this. This is um, needs a little more sun. Um, oh, pretty it's wedding garland that needs to get moved. It's kind of getting eaten. This abelia is is getting large so all the peonies that are in here are going to get moved in the fall um, all the containers are still here I have um, tried to change things out as needed that little um, is it an obelisk I guess um, that's just some black and white black-eyed Susan vine um, I don't even mind if it doesn't get flowers. We're having, um, it hasn't, we haven't been getting as much sun up here. So I think that I'm gonna need to focus on part shade plants for the planters. Um, because you can see, this is just sad. Um, I don't know if it's a combination of just so much rain, not enough sun or what, but these are black and white oriental poppies and as soon as I have their bed completed um, or at least prepped I have to put them into pots and move them and give them some fertilizer and some sun and and try and get them to recover but um, with the exception of just swapping out a few things here or there everything's kind of hanging in there the pests this year non-stop so yep things are a little bit messy mm, this is a tiny wine nine bark that's 
you know, it. I think it does this because I cut from it sometimes, but I don't enjoy this habit. I guess I should probably just like let it get three feet tall and leave it, but um, it's gonna have to move. But everything in here just kind of needs to be cleaned up and staked and cut back. Um, but I have just been working so hard on the backyard that I, I these might actually feel like a treat if I ever make it up here because they're just small and contained. Uh, here we are at the back porch. Still have trees waiting to be planted. Um, I wasn't sure anything was going to happen with these snapdragons, but they're they're nice. This one's called Twinny Apple Blossom. It's really short, so don't think I'll be growing that one again. We don't have a lot of room around here for things that are super short. It's Picasso and Sam. They are our yard cats. They adopted us. And they, they own this porch. Um, so that, the wisteria, it's definitely time to start training it. I just, like I said, I haven't been able to get over here. We are still, I still have to install the copper railing for them on the other two sides of the porch. So um, basically all you kind of do is um, go in and prune out any like side shoots. And uh, I'll do a video on it when we're ready to do it because it's pretty easy to get it to take off. You just kind of find the leaders. There's three kind of trunks for each and I just kind of look for the leaders and start winding them around but um, this hydrangea is so nice to see we had to cut it back really hard the first year that we moved in here and it's been nine years and it never really flowered it was being kind of drowned by weeds and pachysandra and so I, you know I worked on cleaning up around it and you can see that's what the weeds were like <clears throat> and it's just so pretty we have pretty acid soil so this is what it did naturally and it's really really lovely so um and these are the colors that were kind of planned for this bed so these two can definitely stay this one we'll talk about in a sec but the weeds are just this whole area is where the patio is going um the, we're still planning to do the patio this year it's just that um i think lots of businesses are struggling with keeping staff going and um our hardscaping contractor two of his employees had kind of left before the pandemic really kicked in and um they're not coming back so you know we're just kind of struggling with um him having enough help to work on the patio i am still planning to intern on it and work on learning to build like a wet bed bluestone patio so so the plants that i know where they're going i have been pulling out of here so um it's just you can't really tell because weeds take over as soon as they do that and this is again a bed that i was just sort of like i, ca I can't with it right now yeah there's some pretty things to save in here um but definitely keeping these hydrangea here so the the patio design that we're doing has um a step down off of the porch and we're covering the porch with blue stone and um, there will be a step down and then a four foot depth bed on either side and then um, the patio will all be here so that's partially why we haven't done a ton of work to mitigate the weeds but this is that's pretty bad but yeah so this hydrangea you know these big leaf hydrangea I'm not even, I have no idea what the varieties are but this one which is like a pale blushy color it is it's pretty when I look at that one 
but they all kind of like look beat up. So what we're gonna do, or what we, I, cause, oh, that's the other reason all of this has been like so slow is cause Tim's, t my husband, Tim is busy working and I'm doing everything by myself. <laughs> um, I'm going to move this to a shady bed and give it a chance to recover because it is a larger size shrub and we are trying to keep things that have size as much as possible but this is is really lovely all right so this view from the driveway is unchanged with the exception of the fence and um we this is the new grade line so we will be doing um we're actually doing like a boulder wall because the cost of doing a stacked stone wall was just prohibitive so we'll be doing a boulder wall and some natural stone steps to lead us up there and then we will have the patio but whew, can tell there's only one of me if there were two i'm pretty sure i could have this back area in shape too Here's another good, bad, and ugly, ugly moment. So um, the parking pad was full of 12 pallets of soil and mulch. And now it's in the final stages of being cleared out so that 15 pallets of soil <laughs> and mulch can show up. Um, you know, I think every gardener probably starts off with more than they can handle. They think because I'm up, they're going to get breakfast, but they are not. Oh my God, everything back here is just like work in progress, but we'll do a lap and finish up back here. So um, this bed, it looks like the irrigation was just running, is kind of um, the extension of the berry bed. I have blueberries and grapes. I planted some little... Um, blackberry starter plants um, and then I got this kind of perfect Ruby Falls red bud I had ordered one online and I gotta say I won't be doing that again I'm not gonna say who I ordered it from but the tree that I got was just a stick and it never leafed out um, Lysianthus salvia mini mauvette i don't tend to go for like super branded plants but um the color of this and that invincible i got them at the same time i got the tree so um yeah so um this bed now has irrigation as we can see and um i am still working on the irrigation set up here so you can see all the lines and following down the um the birds are really cannibalizing the berry harvest this year um but it's kind of fun as long as the cats don't eat the birds when they come over here it's okay so um strawberries doing pretty well but we never get to eat them because the birds eat them so the plan is actually to move the strawberries to the uh potager which is um the fancy vegetable garden that is in progress so these will be moving and then i am going to be putting up both a suet bird feeder and a water fountain for the birds because i have heard that they eat your bird eat your berries and eat your tomatoes because they're thirsty so no prob we will give them some water we'll give them some food and hopefully i will actually get to eat a strawberry again because I haven't had one in a month uh, we have picked a couple quarts of blueberries off of these um, they just need some sun 
to keep ripening. And then um, ob- the um, the blueberry pan- plants that I moved from the shadier part of the garden are definitely like happy here. So that's nice to see. So next year we should have a ton of blueberries. And then these are just like teeny ornamental grapes. And they are, they were being ravaged by the spotted lanternfly. But um, the spotted lanternfly seems to have moved on to porcelain vine. So um, it's a little easier to track them down. They're just in the porcelain vine. And then I, um, I'm adding a couple planters because the strawberries are just sending out tons of runners. And it seems like we're going to have like a lot of berry plants. I just put that little grouping of planters behind my office. I honestly, I don't even know if I have anything to put in them. I think I have a box of caladium bulbs in storage still. It's just that right now I'm out of potting mix and I have some coming, but it just all feels like I don't know if I can plant any more things. And this year I just put um, some of the stones that I dug out of the hillside up there to make kind of a flat surface for them. but my hardscaping contractor and I are going to work on building like a little natural stone landing up here and some natural stone steps. So there will be a flower bed design in this hillside with like the natural stone steps. I just don't know if we'll be doing that in the middle of winter or in the fall. So I have a few plants that I know I would like to go back here. So I will work on just, you know, compost, cardboard, getting rid of some of the grass and and trying to even out the grade as much as I can to make a few like little planting levels. Is the maple tree that I love. And a friend gifted me with basically a forest's worth of um, columbine. So they were sort of the starting point. I moved, um, it's an endless summer twist and shout hydrangea. It was in the back weedy back porch area. It did not enjoy being transplanted, but it seems to have recovered now that we have slightly cooler temps. Um, the weeds are continuing to take over here, so I'm actually probably going to cover up the unplanted section with plastic while I start to figure out what we're doing there. Just dug out this heuchera from another bed that I have to find a home for, but my friend and I were chatting who gave me, he gave me the columbine and I've never had good luck with them before, but I think I seem to have found like planting conditions that they like. They're getting plenty of water under here. Um, And they get a nice direct hit of morning sun. And then by the hottest point of the day, it's full shade for the rest of the day. Um, But everything in here is filling in nicely. And you know, they're definitely everything showing like mildew and uh, That's just what happens when you don't get rain and then you get three inches, four inches of rain within a few days. So, um, but this ajuga and lamium and the ferns, everything is kind of filling in. Um, This, I want to find more of this heuchera. It's called stainless steel. Really pretty. More ajuga. I will say it's nice to see the baby hellebores that I planted as little $2 seedlings start to really, they're very happy. Um, So yeah, but we'll do the meadow on the way back up. I, I frequently stand here and talk about this path and creating some mystery. And I would say that we're almost there. Um, I still have some, uh, I have had some extra mulch, but I am basically out of, um, compost for now and it's on order, but, um, I'm going to be moving this dappled willow to help create a kind of anchor in this bed. 
and then I think I'll be close to having like my dream path but um I guess we can say the positive of me leaving all of that crap out is that you can see that it's a nice generous path it's comfortable for getting a lawnmower through or the carts or things like that which is something that Tim and I really debated but the Dahlia Garden looks really beautiful. The, um, the terra trellis arbors look great. All right, even though it's a cool early morning, the camera is overheating, which is a delight. This whole bed, <laughs> you can see, I think we can see where the wind was coming. So before the fence went up, this was all exposed and the wind was kind of coming through and across and took everything and like knocked it this way. So I have been working on standing things back up, but you can see by the way the scabiosa grew and the nicotiana that everything is just kind of flopped. But um, the seed pods for the uh, Scabiosa are, are really cool. This is Snow Maiden. And um, just trying to keep this area weeded so I can get more cardboard down. And then um, I have to do some work with moving these roses. And yeah. But, uh, another view of the dahlias. Ooh. Another cafe showed up for us. I've been Instagramming that one. This one just popped open. Seniors Hope. Looks like there's another one there. So they do not, um, I saw a bunch of people on garden.org like kind of worrying about dahlias. They don't really like extreme heat. So and if you're here in the Northeast where we had, you know, 98 degree days for 10 days or whatever, they're not really going to do anything. But once the temperatures kind of drop a little bit, you can see they're just kind of taking off. Although I should say that that's this half of the bed. This half of the bed, you might be like, where are the dahlias? Dead battery. <laughs> Messed up my flow. So this bed definitely runs downhill slightly. So what I'm noticing is that um, that this lower half of the bed does not drain or dry out as much. And I can see more flowers forming, but everything here is still a lot shorter than I had expected it to be. And I have, if I'm pulling out rotten tubers anywhere, I'm pulling them out from here. So um, I will just have to keep working on amending this bed. And I don't regret doing the mulch because it's definitely helping to like hold moisture in. But it's just gonna, I'm just gonna have to keep working on it. But um, the hyacinth bean is doing its thing, climbing. Um, this bed has a lot of shorter varieties in it. So that's also partially why it looks this way. Just in general, like I tried to leave the tubers that were rotting out in place just so I can like make note of what I lost and then I just started scattering some seeds because I have a feeling this is gonna kind of stay like it is and so I just don't want to have to weed constantly so I threw some calendula and zinnias and like seeds that you can kind of throw around anytime I might actually even stick some sunflower seeds into this side because I can definitely, I could use some height in here. But, um, so that's the dahlias. And we'll just come back and look at some of the pretty ones since we just stared at all the ones that are sad. All right, so um, this is where I 
planted most of the uh, cut flower seedlings in the kind of white, tan, chocolate colors. So um, these are two Winecraft Black Smoke Bush that I got on sale last year and they were in the back porch bed kind of holding. Um, these are all these are all pansies that I grew from seed. That's Antique Shades, um, Snow Maiden, Fata Morgana, and Black Knight. Um, this rose, well, these three roses, but they're all one variety, is Betty White. And it looked incredible six weeks after transplant and I just deadheaded and it looks like it's gonna flush back so this rose is so beautiful and it smells lovely so very happy with these and so most of the roses that I put in this year I got three five or seven of and <laughs> I think I only got seven of one, but, um, so I'm trying to kind of plant them in these like triangular groupings so that should they get overgrown, I'm only having to like move one to two of them. But, um, I did try to think about their mature sizes. This side of the bed is, it looks really beautiful. Oh, we found the good part of the garden. We've seen the bad and the ugly. <clears throat> um, lacy, lacy pink flower, silene, peach screamer, Nicotiana, which the bugs are obsessed with. I actually have been making lots. Oh, and I forgot to say that that's a rising sun red bud that... Um, We'll check on it in a year. <laughs> it's not much to look at. Um, Queen Anne's Lace, everything in here was seedlings that I grew from seed over the winter. So um, long ago, <laughs> when I made my seed starting video, I talked about how I was trying lots of different varieties, lots of different colors, just to see what they look like. Because I still think that as I add shrubs and roses and peonies and perennials to these beds, I am still going to want to fill in with moments like this. And so that's why I kind of just like scattered them in drifts. And this is silver cloud, this rose. And um, these are a little beat up, but it's this amazing like buff lavender off gray. Oh, and I must have thrown some zinnia seeds in here. The only bummer of this rose is that it's small. <laughs> like it's it's a, it's little. It doesn't get bigger than like two by three. So um, so these things in front of it, we will have to you know make sure that this stays low. But it looks really pretty with the saline and the lacy pink. Um, Queen Anne's Lace <laughs> grows like a weed. This is um, the Dara, the chocolate Queen Anne's. Um, this is terracotta for the pansies, but you can see like the bees are just like obsessed with this peach screamer, Nicotiana. Um, Moving on down, we got more. All my scabiosis seedlings got mixed up, so they're a little bit all over the place. Um, the amaranth has been under pest pressure. It looks like I've got lisianthus. Um, I think this is apricot, which means this one, which is a later, should be um, champagne. But so many of these are fun for cutting. They look nice and full for filling in the bed. Like basically, I'm just trying to keep weeds down. Um, pink champagne, celosia, phlox, cherry caramel, and dulce de leche. And then my, my friend came by for social distancing, garden, walking around. We've been doing that in each other's gardens. And he was like... 
Is that Heucara? No, those are my hollyhocks. They're rusty. Um, we've had to spray spinosad and neem over here quite a bit to try and get on top of the bug situation. And um, they don't, the hollyhocks didn't enjoy that. <clears throat> They're still growing and flowering though. They just don't look so pretty. And I don't want to cut them back hard until I start to see a little more growth. So just going to fertilize over here and hope that they make a recovery. Uh, Rudbeckia, the only Rudbeckias I planted this year were Sahara and Caramel Mix, but these very much look like cherry brandy so we'll see more amaranthus it's just the bugs are just uh eating those plants almost to death and they needed to be staked but they're doing okay like i went through this bed yesterday and looked for things to stand up and it's not worth kind of breaking the plant to make them stand up and we are still working on filling in the soil with nice soil and mulch along the fence line. So coming around here, we're planning to put like a big anchor tree there at some point. Coming around here, just transplants from the fence line and seedlings. Got some tomatoes, more of that bronze fennel. This is a golden raspberry, my favorite, Penstemon. Oh, Coco Loco decided to show up for the tour. Um, um, I lost the one that I had and got some slightly larger roses and then some smaller ones um it might be too many for in here but i love it it's a floribunda so it's a slightly smaller with um it's a smaller flower with more roses per stem um i love to cut from it i like the way it looks in the landscape so um, sevens may be too many but it, it will keep me in flowers so i went loco for coco loco and then this rose is julia's rose which so incredibly beautiful but she is very high maintenance so it seems to like this spot <clears throat> it has been in one other home I think if I can keep it kind of weed free, watered, give it a little extra rose fertilizer and kind of keep things away from it, it has a shot at having a happy life. It's so pretty and it's really hard to find because, you know, Googling Julia's rose gets you, as you can imagine, all kinds of weird searches, but um, it's so pretty. Hopefully before the end of the summer, we'll get to see one. I had one at the beginning of the season, one flower, and then haven't had any since then. Um, this is the brown Lysianthus. Um, these are like so my colors. I have more tomato plants than I can fit in the, um, the potager. So I started populating them into my beds because they're fun to cut from and also it's just nice to have a cherry tomato while you're walking around or weeding. These are the dahlias from last year. Uh, I'm not giving them anything special and I haven't staked them. I kind of just wanted to see what they would do left to their own devices and that's also partially because I honestly don't know what varieties they are. Um, these sad little teeny delphiniums in the middle here are, um, I grew them from seed. Delphiniums can be kind of challenging to start from seed. They don't like the heat from the heat lamps. They like a little bit of cold, so I've refrigerated some of them and then just kind of started them 
in a sunny window and I had great germination. I just could not get this bed. I, I didn't have a place to put them and they just kind of sat in their little plugs for too long. Um, whew. Scabio says all knocked down. I have to go through and still stake this bed. Some black adder, agastache, a joe pie weed that we tried to relocate from along the fence line and only two stalks survived, but it does look like it's going to be okay. Just everything over here is going to be really tiny for this year. This is sterling silver and this is like a great example of what happens when we get a lot of rain to my roses. It just gets splashed back and black spot and a little mildew but for the most part it's okay so I will come through on a not sunny day and spray that and um, it is getting to be like the last week of the month that tends to be when I like feed roses and spray and treat them but the pests have just been so wild this year it feels like we're doing that all the time but yeah this is the latest bed to get planted so everything's pretty tiny um, me and that rose are having a disagreement about what color it's supposed to be. Um, this is a Violet Dusk Baptisia that I got as little young starters. I am obsessed with Penstemon because I like it as a flower and the bees really like it so I have many varieties of it. These are my indigo rose tomatoes. You can eat them, they're a little more savory. Um, and I also planted them for flower arranging. But yeah, this rose is supposed to be a little more lilac than this magenta pink, so I'll deadhead that and we'll just monitor it to see. Um, the nine barks that are in this bed were along the fence line, so they have been moved and they will just need a little TLC. So this is the, the last section on this side that needs to have its bed put in. This has become like a shrub holding area. So it, I did put some shade cloth over the bubble because it's getting to be over 100 in there most days. But I'm really just kind of using it for storage right now. Um, and then this is very much a work in progress, but um, we had two raised beds and um, I was so excited to learn about growing for donation that um, we made an effort to put in more vegetable growing space so at least the donations for the fall can be like really abundant so um, we were actually given some of the new raised beds as a gift which I'm very excited about because it allows me to just add more seeds, plant more stuff to make bigger donations. Um, we did a round of spaghetti squash already. We have been cutting enough greens for the two of us, um, but I just put in a whole lot more. So hopefully I'll be able to start donating bags of greens and you can check out um, Harvest 2020 in collaboration with Pennsylvania Horticultural Society for the guidelines on like how to donate fresh produce or produce that you grow. Um, so we had an early crop of spaghetti squash and I just put in a few more transplants. So everything here looks a little rough, but um, it looks like I just planted zucchini seeds that just came up. I have white pumpkins in here just two little pumpkins um, but it looks like these plants are gonna recover just fine this bed is lettuce and carrots <laughs> uh, it looks a little funny right now but I actually did um, so <laughs> I think we'll do a whole separate video on um, potager French style vegetable garden versus just you know American farming garden 
But um, what I was really drawn to was that um, planting not just in blocks, but in patterns. So I planted in like a checkerboard pattern, which you can probably sort of see emerging, um, probably also because the drip lines kind of help delineate some of the sections, but all my beds are four by four. And I'll show you the drawing of kind of how I planned it out. Um, the only issue with deciding to redo your vegetable plantings in the middle of the season is transplant shock and, and uh, potentially damaging plants. But I'm happy to report that the tomatoes actually responded very well to being thinned from their previous bed and given a little more space. Um, blossom end rot is probably just from water, but I am going to give um, them some tomato feed. And then, oh God, these lantern flies. Um, cherry tomatoes. We just started eating the first cherry tomatoes and then um, the peppers are happy with more jalapeno, poblano, bell, tomatillo. I'm not sure if I'm gonna get any more tomatillos this year because my one plant got damaged in the storm and they need two to cross pollinate. But um, yeah, happy to have more space to grow for sure. And then if you follow me on Instagram, I mentioned that I'm doing planters in the center here, these planters and all the gray strawberry planters. So I am refinishing these. They are primed currently and they will be the paint color that I have chosen soon enough. And this will be just an assemblage of containers. So the aisles are two feet wide, which is smaller than recommended, but I felt like it was the right footprint for the space that I have. Um, I obviously could do another one here if I wanted to, but I like the idea of keeping it more flexible for containers. And so looks like, oh, we got, so that I decided to just start fall crops because it's a little late and a little weird to still be doing summer stuff. So this bed is, let's look at the drawing. <laughs> I feel like it's broccoli, two kinds of onion, and snow peas. And then this is exciting to see. This is gonna be sweet corn. I think it will be, we have a pretty long season. So starting these, the second week of July, we, we don't usually get our first frost until second week of November. So I think I have enough time to get like hopefully a really big harvest of sweet corn out of this bed to donate. <clears throat> and then this is sort of like a mixed bed, but this kind of shows you some of the lines you can do. I have like an oregano, um, a straight neck, squash, some cucumber plants in different stages, some watermelons, different, uh, uh, the latest sowing of greens in just kind of like stripes and patterns. And oh, that squash. And then this is a uh, carrot back here that Looks like they're starting to come up. So. But I will do a whole video on the potage because I have the kind of planning process and what I've learned about the design of them. But I just really like, it's just cute. Um, And I love having the space to grow for us and to, you know, grow some crops strictly for donating. I think that that has made it really rewarding. So we'll revisit this when the planters are done and in, and I'm gonna make a little solar fountain for this area. I don't think we looked at these guys from this side, but I think this is Penhill Watermelon. 
I don't know. There's tags down there, but I don't feel like digging them up. Just the fact that they're labeled this year is a win. So this is one of the areas that will become, this is a shade bed under the pine. And then this is the meadow, which, so some, some ferns in the recovery zone, some ferns that look better, lots of plants still to add to here. Um, <laughs> I grew this gara from seed and it is much taller than the store-bought gara <laughs> I've gotten in the past. So while it's pretty, it's definitely too tall to be at the front. Um, we're working on filling in this band here. Um, I got, and I'm adding a couple varieties of Amsonia and grasses through here. They seem to be doing okay with the amount of sun, but there is a possibility that this section over will have to transition to more of like a truly shady plants. But everything here looks cool. It's very weedy in here. This is one of the harder beds to maintain. We use the pine tree needles as mulch, and it's just not a very effective mulch. But how can you fight it? It's gonna be here no matter what. So, but this is one of the beds that I tilled years ago and it has never stopped being so weedy. So <laughs> I don't know that I'll ever be pulling it all out and putting cardboard down and compost, but it just, it, it's a, this itself could be a full-time job weeding. But it's, you know, I, you can see some of the blocks of things that I've sowed over the years and the kind of grasses marred by the weeds. Um, we are moving this tree. It just, we were, I was struggling to train it to get as tall as the porch and Tim kind of likes the shape that it's making. So we're actually gonna move it back there. Um, and I will be doing, I will be kind of refreshing the plantings from here over. So things will be sort of shifting around, but I'm not even sure I'm gonna get to that this year. I mean, my season's very long, but I'm tired. And as I've said, this year just feels relentless with pressure and to stay positive and keep it up, so. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching the garden renovation tour and update. Um, I'm sure you guys can see lots of progress. I'm trying to see the progress that I've made and trying to remember it's progress, not perfection. And um, just trying to hang in there. It's a tough year for lots and lots of people. I am grateful to have my home and my projects. Um, and I'm grateful to you guys for watching and checking in and for you guys that um, are here on YouTube you can also check me out on Instagram and Facebook I do tend to post the designs that I make with things for my garden on Instagram fairly regularly so thank you guys so much for watching be sure to subscribe I can't tell you how um, for a new content creator how much we kind of rely on people subscribing and sharing our videos and kind of spreading the word um, it is sometimes really hard to keep up with the work of making videos when you're not sure anyone's watching them all right guys thank you so much be sure to subscribe. Please share with a friend and ask them to subscribe. As a content creator, you can sometimes feel like you're just putting stuff out into the void and you know everybody wants to find their people, right? So thank you for watching and I will see you soon.